Welcome back science parents. Today we're going to be looking at magnets. In particular, we're going to be looking at the Bernard Magnetic Kit. This I got for $22 on Amazon. So without further ado, let's break it open and see what's inside. Okay, let's take a look at what we have in this case. So, we have a tiny little instruction sheet. A compass. A little box with iron filings inside. couple of plastic parts and a bundle of paper clips some wheels we're going to make a little car shortly A bag of butterflies with little magnets on. A series of plastic bases. Plastic rod. And some electronic components. We have a black and a red cable, an electronic switch, a coil of wire with a couple of terminals. We're going to be making an electromagnet a little shortly and finally a battery holder battery is not included and finally we have the magnets themselves the u-shaped magnets a couple of bar magnets some ring magnets couple of circular magnets and some more bar magnets. So these are the different types of magnets we have. Now of course a magnetic field is an invisible force. Magnets have a polarity. We call them having a north and south pole, similar to the magnetic poles of the earth. And the first thing we learn about magnets is if you try to push two of the same pole together <laughs> and as you can see one of the fundamental problems of magnets is they would love to stick to each other so if you try to stick two of the same pole together they will push each other apart the same pole rejects the same pole now if you put opposite poles together, like this north and south pole, they love to stick together. This is why you'll find magnets tend to clump together as the opposite poles get attracted to each other. So what we're learning from these magnets is the north pole is, in, is colored red for our convenience and the South Pole is colored blue. For example, if we look at this stack of ring magnets, they're all stuck together 
we try to push to with opposite pole with the same pole. See, both of these are red north poles. We try to push them together, they repel each other. You, you can't. But if you put opposite poles, north and south, boop, they attract each other. And we can use this to demonstrate levitation. So again, taking these ring magnets, if we put one on the bottom, now notice we have North Pole up. So if we were to just to put North Pole up again, then the South Pole will attract the North Pole and they stick together. We've seen that before. So let's put North Pole up. And now let's put South Pole up. Because now, see the two North Poles repel each other. So it looks like you have a magic levitation effect. And we can go further. Now we have a South Pole on top. So let's put a South Pole down. And now we have a North Pole on top. So let's put a North Pole down. And you see, we have, if I squish them all, whoops, they're going to pop off the top. And now you can see that we're demonstrating levitation because all these magnets are rejecting each other. It's an interesting experiment. Coins are generally not magnetic. I can touch either pole to either a copper coin or a silver coin and they're not magnetic. Contrast that with these paper clips which are made of a magnetic metal. And notice that the magnetic field passes through one paper clip even to be able to extend into the next one. The magnetic field flows through the metal. So you can in fact chain these together. The minute I take the top one off, they all fall apart. Notice that you can chain paper clips or any type of magnetic metal from either pole of the magnet. But they will have a tendency to want to attract to the other side of the magnet. This is just how magnetic field flows. It wants to flow from one pole to the other. And so the natural tendency is for something to bridge the gap between the poles. Let's take a look at a compass. If you let the compass settle, you can see that the red end of the indicator will point north. It doesn't actually matter what the display itself is saying. The red end is pointing north. So typically the way you use a compass is to actually align the compass so that north on the dial is underneath the red pole. And now you can see that west is in this direction, south and east. That's using the earth magnetic field to pull that red end towards the north magnetic pole. And bonus points if you are aware that the magnetic poles are not equal to the geographic poles. Maybe some research is to find out why. So we already said that the same pole repels itself. So the red indicator is north on the compass and the red end of this magnet is north. So if I put it down on red, notice that it flips. It, the two are rejecting each other. Or more importantly, the magnet is affecting the behavior of the compass. Let's let it settle back north again. Now if I flip it, and use the south pole over the indicator on the compass, you can see that it doesn't do anything because opposite poles do not repel each other. But 
I now have total control over this compass. So I can turn this around and I can say, hey, north is in the opposite direction now. Or north is now east. So it's important to know that magnetic fields will affect a compass when you're using it. Let's take the little closed box with iron filings inside. Iron is particularly susceptible to magnetic fields. Now, don't open this box and be tempted to make experiments with the iron filings themselves. You'll make a total mess, they'll stick all over the magnet, and you'll have a hell of a time getting them all off. That's why they're inside the box. Now I'm going to lay a bar magnet on here, and I'm just going to agitate these iron filings a little. You can now see the flow of the magnetic field. Now if you look closely, you can see that the iron filings are falling into the magnetic field, and they're a way of indicating the presence of the magnetic field. So you can see the flow from one pole into the other. And see they flow out of this pole, parallel to the magnet, and back into the end of this magnet. Question, or are they flowing from south to north? Don't know if we're going to get anything out of these little magnets. Let's try. There you can see a different type of magnetic field. You can see them all radiating out. Let's try that with one of these bigger ring magnets. There you can see the radial pattern surrounding the magnet. In the kit, there's a collection of wheels and axles. So I've assembled some of them. I'm going to put one of these large bar magnets on top, like so. And then I'm going to do the same with another car over here. Like so. And notice that I've got both southern poles facing each other. So as I try to drive this car into that one, it will push it away. And in fact, it will destroy the car. Perhaps an easier way to do this is simply to use the magnet without another vehicle. There we until the car falls apart. Now, if we had the magnet secured to the axles in some way, then obviously the car would just be propelled out of the way. Let's look at the principle of an electromagnet. There's a switch in the kit. Mine didn't actually work. So skipping that, I've got a 1.5 volt battery in the battery case, and I have the electromagnet. This is basically a very tightly wrapped coil of wire. Now by itself, it doesn't do anything. You can see it's not attracting the paper clip. It's not influencing the iron filings in any way. But what happens when you pass an electric field through this coil? So basically, I now have the circuit connected up to pass an electric field through the coil. Now, a coil, when it has an electric field inside, will automatically generate a magnetic field. And in fact, you can see here, it's got the paper clip. If I pull this terminal off the battery, drops the paper clip immediately. It's the electricity that's causing it to create the magnetic field. There is no magnetic field in this coil by itself. As you can see here, it's magnetic. The electricity is generating a magnetic field. 
If I pass this over the iron filings, you can see it does in fact leave a pattern in the iron filings. It's a very, very weak magnet. It's only 1.5 volts going through this coil. Normally electromagnets are more powerful. They have a larger electric field passing through them and they have a higher density of coils wrapped around the shaft. But this one is powerful enough to generate a magnetic field. And once again, here it is attracting the paper clip. If I take away the power, then immediately the magnetic field ceases and it drops the paper clip. That's an electromagnet at work. So let's look at the ratings board. Packaging and components, I give 3.5 each. Uh, it's put in a plastic case to keep it together. Uh, the components are pretty durable, but nothing to write home about. Very basic stuff, but some good quality magnets in there. You should be able to use the magnets for your own experiments. Instructions, two out of five. It's just a simple two-sided card. There's five experiments listed, not much at all. They could have produced a larger booklet. Experiments, three out of five. They demonstrated some principles such as magnets repelling or attracting and electromagnets, but nothing teaching you a great deal about magnetic fields. Science, definitely a one out of five. They didn't even attempt to explain any of the science principles behind the experiments. Uh, you definitely would need to do your own research on magnets for this. Fun, three out of five. So overall, I give it a three out of five. There's definitely some information in there about magnets, how they attract or repel each other, magnetic fields, electromagnets, but it's not going to keep your kid busy for more than 30 minutes, hour tops, and you're definitely going to need to do some of your own research to be able to teach this material. There's nothing in the kit to help you with that. Uh, for $22, I've expected more, but you win some, you lose some. So uh, hopefully you found this video useful. Um, please do leave comments below for any particular kits or type of science you want me to review. I'm open to whatever you're interested in. Tell me and I'll get the kit and I'll review it. In the meantime, Please give the video a like and a subscribe. It really helps my channel out and I thank you all for the support you've given me so far. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheerio.